questions that I haven't covered or whatever things are something that I'll have to answer. Um, passing through a fearful real profession with things like Babylon 5 is a computer generated effect. Is that a skill you're going to have to master then? Well, I wouldn't master it. It just doesn't interest me at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be perfectly frank, I look at it. I would have to use a word of a craftsman. I'm not really right, but yes, I do lose work to it. An immense amount of work. I used to do a great deal of TV commercial work. In tomorrow's uh, lecture, I'll show you a lot of the stuff I've done in TV commercials. I hardly ever get any work in that line at all now. The smarties adverts and what have you are all done by using you know, computer generated graphics. Um, it's just not something I'm interested in. I get my buzz from carving pieces of wood, get plasticine under my fingernails. That's the kind of thing I'm interested in. If it comes to just doing computers, I think I'll do something else. I mean, I, I, I have to say that although I'm known for doing special effects models, I do do a vast amount of other kinds of models as well. I mean, who, who's had a really good life? Yeah, well, I've got some miniatures, costumes to leave behind as well. I mean, they have different computers. I mean, not, not, not recently, but I've done a lot of work with them. I scouted the flower fairies, which you may have seen in the shops. It keeps me part of the prevalence as well, as 36 of those. So it's variation. I'm more into doing the hands on the video, but that's what turns me on. Fitting with a computer is not just To me, it's not. Then we get that one of the computers. The only thing you get is making models seem a bit physical at the end of the day. You've got the photographs, you've got the model. Now, I know. Um, Quite often, the props, uh, costumes are auctioned off and they raise a lot of money. Yeah. Um, what sort of. You do you have control over that? I don't, really. No, I don't. No. Um, I was mentioning before earlier on, actually, what, what, what I find very nice. I mean, there's, there's two sides to this. One, one, one very nice one. Um, recently, uh, the Horizon, the Blake Seven Appreciation Society, and I actually probably know what's on Blake Seven for about five years. Um, asked me if I had anything to contribute to the auction. And I gave them one of two original teleport bracelets, which I have. I've only got one now. It's the last one. But I had two of these things. And I gave one of these to this auction. And it raised £1,700. <laughs> I didn't believe them. They said to me, how much do you think it would raise? And I said, well, maybe £100. It raised £1,700. Well, that, that's fantastic. I mean, if, if props can raise money like that, that that's tremendous. Well, uh, the downside, yeah, as you touch on it, the downside is that unfortunately, uh, some of you, I'd be very interested to hear if anybody's heard of this, but recently a number of people, one person in particular, came to me with a Cyberman gun which he bought at, uh, from a gentleman who reported to have bought it from me and it was supposed to be an original Cyberman gun. I have to say it wasn't an original Cyberman gun, he paid £350 for it. Um, he, he bought it to me not to be authenticated, he bought it to me to sign it. He didn't have any question in his mind that it was mine. As soon as I saw it, I realised, first of all, it wasn't original, and secondly, he'd been ripped off, and he was very unhappy. Since this has happened, I've been approached by a number of people, and it appears that there are an awful lot of teleport bracelets, guns from Doctor Who, which are supposed to be original, and they're not original. There's no way that they are original, and I've said if anybody's got one and they want me to verify if it's one that I built, and I built, as far as I know, I built all the teleport bracelets which were built, then I'm quite happy to do so for no, you know, for no charge at all. I just hope you haven't been ripped off, but I do know certainly of several people that this has happened to, particularly with Blake 7 teleport bracelets. What, what could we expect? If I wanted you to make me an SPV, let me go outside, what sort of cost? Sorry, no, I mean, is it disgusting? <laughs> <laughs> is it more expensive than it? Well, they, I mean, some of them. If I tell you that the, the SPV, to get it right, I took a lot of, a far more time than it would actually be to because I was trying to get it right. I was trying to get every panel line in the right place. I was trying to get it absolutely exact. Thunderbird 2 is the same thing. I wanted to get it absolutely as precise as I possibly could. Now, because of that, I spent a lot of time. I took eight weeks on Thunderbird 2. And if I'm telling you I'm sort of 50, 60 hours a week, you, you imagine how, how much will you save, how much would you expect to earn in, in six to eight weeks? That'll give you some idea. They cost thousands. The, S, the SPV is, I can only tell you my insurance values, the SPV is insured for four and a half thousand pounds. Thunderbird 2 is insured for four and a half thousand pounds as well. So, but 
So, with, with that sort of time, I assume you make it to order. No, I, I well, we, well, I do. I do do a few. But I mean, again, you're into this thing of copyright. I, I'm not. You have to be licensed. Well, so, I mean, in terms of, they will come to you. Can you make us yeah. an SPV? Oh not yeah. You make something, they use it. Oh no. What happened with with the Thunderbirds and the Stingray comments? What actually happened was, um, I'm licensed through Flea Publications. Mm -hmm. They came to me. Well, I, it's not strictly true. I, I, it was kind of a joint thing. I heard that they were going to do a Thunderbirds comment because this was the first one that they wanted to do, and they came to me and they said. Um, I hear you've got some Thunderbird bottles, and I've got ones I've had from a kid. I mean, I had a lot of Thunderbird bottles I made when I was a child. And I said, well, I have. And it kind of escalated. He said, and, and the editor out of the film said to me, he said, well, how about making us a Thunderbird too, and doing some shots? And it just sort of went on from there. And uh, that's how that grew. And uh, what did you see? I ended up with me making loads. But in actual fact, I only get paid for the photographs. I don't actually get paid for the models. So it's up to me to sell that photograph as many times as I possibly can. So it's quite so that's why also because why I keep the models? Because normally if I'm doing a model for a film, nine times out of ten, I'll never see that model again. The serverland ship which is out there was retrieved from the skip outside the BBC TV centre. And that's normal. The liberator was the same, the liberator was thrown in the skip and which recovered. And that I'm afraid is normal. The classic story I think I mentioned to you tonight is was Outland. On Outland we spent my partner and I spent four and a half months building a refinery, which was Half the size of this room, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. And at the end of shooting, um, when they finally gave the final rack, they brought a JCB digger into the stage and it just put its scoop down and it just pushed the whole thing out into the lot and they put a match to it. Now, a few people did manage to retrieve a few bits and pieces. I believe the tiny section, the piece that's in that photograph of the stingray, but 99 was even more than this the same thing happened in 2001, Stanley Kubrick personally ordered everything, because I worked with Brian Johnson on Space 1999, but he worked with Kubrick on 2001. Everything was destroyed, they burned the lot. When you make a reconstruction, you're not giving plans, it's all, everything from work, design, research. Well, the research, yes, I mean, there's a lot of time, I mean, including in doing that Thunderbird too, I had to get hold of it, I mean, I had to make my of plans. I was very fortunate. I had I had um, access to the plans which were done for Dinky Toys. Um, when Dinky made the toys back in the 60s, um, Century 21 provided beautiful profile photographs of all the models. If anyone's seen any of these Japanese guys, because there were some wonderful profile shots. And these are what I used to work to. What I actually did was by identifying certain kit parts which were on the model, or the size of the metric set on the side of the model, and that's what you have to do. I photographed that picture onto a slide. I then shot it onto a piece of paper which was the correct size and drew around it. And that's how I got the right size. But that's quite an involved process. Yeah. You are Brian Johnson and Yeah. Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah. Yeah, I worked, I worked, well, I worked with him first of all in the early 70s on Space 1999. And then I worked with him on Alien as well. When you talk about models and models retrieved from Master, and sometimes talking about models retrieved from skips and things like that, did you have to refurbish models and say for Space 1999? Did you have to retrieve any of the models that are used? No, the, model, the models for Space 1999 actually were well looked after. What actually happened was, I stored them for quite a long time, um, but all the towers, the theme park, opened up and decided to put them into an exhibition. And they stayed there for many years, and they were subsequently bought by a private collector. But quite a large number of them disappeared over the years to turn up in various private collections. How that happened, I'm not quite sure, but I know that quite a few did disappear and turned up in various places. I mean, I have to say that when, when Century 21 Studios was closed, just after the UFO, um, most of the models were on the bonfire, actually on Jerry Anderson's orders. He actually had the whole lot burned. But I do also know that, um, because I've worked with a lot of people who worked there at the time, that you know they basically sort of thought, if they're going to chuck it on the bonfire, I'll have that. But models have appeared. I mean, I, I own one of the original Parker Puppets, which was saved from that bonfire, and he's worked quite a lot of them. Why, why do they actually do that? Is it, is it to protect their copyright? No, I, I, to be honest, I think it comes down to money. It's too expensive to insure and store them. This is the excuse I've been given. Personally, if it was up to me, I think they're, they're worth keeping. I mean, to, to me, I'm an artist. I like to think of myself as an artist. I care about what I make. 
I would never do, no matter what it costs to store and insure them, I wouldn't chuck them away. I would rather give them to somebody who, uh, in fact, I did that. I mean, I had some models left over from space, and I actually gave them away to fans. But then what happens is, you know, they turn up in various places being sold at fast forms of money. But I would never destroy them. The real reason that I've been told is that they were too expensive to store and to insure them. Which I suppose, you know, it makes sense. I was also know you were talking about photographs we've seen. Very nice one, the wheat jets. The yeah. real ones. Oh, yeah. And I know the conversation is in the car. You were, you were talking about how you'd go spend eight weeks building a model and you'd go to the perfect and then somebody else gets it with your work. It's not for anybody, it just sits in the 
nobody could offer me any amount of money, I wouldn't sell it. So probably something like that. As regards design-wise, there's certain models that I've understood. I think they're really nice. I like the little skim jet that's out there, one of those models. I made that a long time ago, actually. It got used in some of those comments, but I actually just made it for myself. The Selena light, I did that just purely for myself. I just wanted to make the Selena because I read Arthur C. Clarke's book and I thought that would make a nice model. And I usually tend to enjoy the ones which I'm making for myself simply because there's no time pressure. So we've got a type of dreams of clear. Well, I mean, I just come up with this series, Stargard, which is something we've heard of, and I've done a lot of model work for it, and I would like to get it off the ground, but in this country, I think that would be a war thing. No, no, no company in this country would just put any money into anything at all. You have to go to the industry of America. It's very, very sad. Yeah? Yeah? I, I get asked the question, which episodes did I work on? To be honest, I can only answer one. I worked on Earthshot. I worked on lots of others as well, but I don't remember the names of it because I just get given a brief, and quite often I don't know the name of the episode or the script. I did most 99% of what you see in Earthshot, the cyber gun to cyber guns. And this is in fact one of the guns which I was shown, which was a replica, was a cyber gun, which it wasn't a cyber gun at all, it was a replica that somebody else had made. Um, something like that. Um, various other episodes of Doctor Who. I did the TARDIS. I actually made the little TARDIS that you see spinning around in about the third season in the title sequence. Uh, yes. Um, we're talking about individual models that you made for Space 1999. Did you do the Swift models? Yeah. There was only one Swift model. Yeah, no, there was only one. Yeah. 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 I did 86 models for that show. I designed 70 of them. No, I, I didn't have them up, somebody else did. A guy, a guy did a resume of all the models I've made, but we've got the 860 from it. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, um, you said what your most enjoyable project was. What was your least enjoyable project? Alien. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me. The reason, the reason it was the least enjoyable was, I mean, you have to appreciate that in 1977 when I started work on it, we did not know we were making a piece of film history. The reason it was very, was very, very hard to work on, initially I was very enthusiastic, as we all were. But if you work 14 months on a film, from 8 o'clock in the morning till 4 o'clock in the morning, for 14 months, and then you find out that at the end of the day there's six minutes of model film on the screen, what's your factual to become very, very tedious. It, it basically was the fact that we had to rebuild some of the models. Yeah, because I heard you started with like just a little shit and then you didn't like it, and like like domes and you're, you're, towers. Well, in a way, uh, what I'd like to say is actually you're preempting what I'm going to do tomorrow. If you see the one tomorrow, are you going to be here tomorrow? The slideshow tomorrow has got all the alien stuff in it. It's got all the, 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 the way it was, all the sort of uh, metamorphoses that they went through. So I don't really want to preempt that too much. When they, when they say to you, you know, we want you to build a whole new spaceship for a whole new film. Yeah. Is there a time you think, oh, I can't be a little bit new? No. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is shit. She's in that answer for you. No, never. I've got so many eyes. Oh, no, they just come. I've got all these spaceships. I've got boxes of all these spaceships waiting for somewhere to put them. No, I don't. I don't. You've seen that box ship. Yeah. Now I've seen the photographs of other model makers who've made hair dry spaceships. Done. My name's not Matt Is there so anything you've picked up and thought I could use that and got happy to have thought, no, maybe I couldn't? No, because I disguise it, well, I hope I'm going to show some sort of thing. But no, I, I, you've got to disguise it. I, I've, used, I've, I've used everything under the sun. Again, in tomorrow's one, I've got the lot. I've got, I'll show you all the bits I use because I've actually gone into that side of it. With the Thunderbirds, they really are on the scratch bill. The Yogurt Pop. Ship is the other one. Flower is the only one I do. But in the one in the other in the other slideshow there are a great many ships which are made out of all kinds of things. Like there's babies, rattles, there's everything under the sun. And I actually my my mother and my wife go around the supermarket show picking things which are the right shapes. Oh I can make something out of that. Yeah, the mask will be able to do something with that. <laughs> that's what we actually do. It's merely a curiosity question, because when Space Nine was cast, how was it talk for the first season? Did you have any involvement in this supposed new ship, the Falcon, they were going to use? Or was it only in pre production? Oh, right. Ready? Yeah, it's going to replace the Eagles for the third season. That is but the first time the Eagles were in fan fiction. That is, that's fan fiction. That's the first time the Eagles were in fan fiction. I was involved in Star Cruise. I built two Star Cruises and I designed them with Star Cruises, which was for a set I also designed a Rescue 4, which was another one that never came. I did a lot of work on that, but that didn't see that. 
Nasser, no, it, it's difficult. I mean, the, the, uh, the, Nostro the Nostromo was designed by a lot of people. It was initially designed by a guy called Ron Cobb, an American. But what we finally snark. ended up with, the snark, was something completely different. It went through five or six changes of design and colour before the thing that you find the saw on the screen. Yeah. So when you brought it into it, I know it's kind of preempted. How soon you brought it into it? Because you said, Ron Cobb had the snark. Well, I never Chris met Ron Cobb. I was on the film for 14 months and I never met Chris Ron Cobb. Chris Cobb had the and the uh, Leviathan. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the leaf of another two pre-production designs yeah. didn't make it through. Yeah. Did they have a finished model and say that's it? No, they say make something so you don't no. We made a prototype, which I've got a photograph of, which I'll show you a bit later tomorrow. But it, 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 we made a, a prototype of the, of the Nostromo, and uh, then it sort of it changed, and then Ridley Scott came over with his hand on his chisel and chopped it all the bits and moved it. And it <laughs> I'm not joking, the hammer and chisel job, I'll, I'll show you. I hope you can see it, because it's, it's the most enlightening thing in the, the way the film industry works, really. Spending 14 months on a project, is it better for you or easier to work over a 14 month period on a project rather than saying, oh, we want it tomorrow? No, I prefer, I like the, I like the deadline, the rush, actually. The, the, after 14 months, I think what the problem with the 14 months was that we got sick and tired of really Scott changing his mind. I mean, that's no disrespect to him, he's the director and his work goes, but he was very destructive. I mean, if, if I tell you that we built the refinery, we built the Nostromo, we shot on the Nostromo for about six or seven weeks, and then Ridley Scott came over and changed the colour, and got a hammer and chisel and started chopping pieces off it, changing it around. All that went back down the pan. Well, he did that five or six times. So we kept, so all this ended up on the cutting room floor, and then he would completely change his mind. And had huge numbers on the side at one time, and he took them all off and he shot it again without the numbers. Then he said, No, I don't like it yellow, we'll have it grey. So we painted it grey, and we shot it that. He said, No, I don't like it that colour, now we need the probes on the side. So he broke the probes off one of the flamethrowers and stuck them on the one. He said, That's better. Now build those in, and it just went on and on like this. And eventually the enthusiasm just died. So at the end of the day, it was just a hard work. Plus the fact that we were working from literally from 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was often wasn't getting home until 4 o'clock in the morning. And we were called to do what we was going to right through the night to work with shooting so many hours. Did you have a large crew work at all? No, very few people on the models. On the model crew, um, it was myself, my partner Bill Pierce, and we had about half a dozen sort of, uh, on the set, I said, the students sort of helped us uh, as well. Basically, and, and a couple of carpenters who were excellent, we built basic heavy structures that we put the details on to. I go into it all the time. I don't want to read, uh, you know, the pre out too much when you said that. Yeah. Um, a bit of a training spot this question. I'm, I'm thinking only about it from the other to the south. But I'm stuck on the left set. You mentioned that for certain time. Can you remember the... <laughs> I can the remember it all. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, yeah. Um, do you want to see me afterwards? Yeah, that's wallet. a bit technical. I can answer all your questions. I just get just get your wallet ready. Because you will find that to get it is going to cost you a bomb, because it's cost me a bomb to get the right electric set. Well the set don't make the right set anymore. But I will tell you where to go and how to get it if you see me afterwards. One or two questions. No right. Thank you very much, Martin, for today's talk. As Martin said, tomorrow, I believe it's tomorrow afternoon, the film work, the advert work, and everything else you would possibly think of. Before you run away, I've got a few requests from other people. Now, people who've been in the auction, please go and A, pay and B, collect their work from the annex as soon as possible. A couple of Martin's bottles while you're there can do something to do. Also, we're now taking deposits for next year's um, I've been, I have been providing that one out to you. It is cheaper to register this weekend than it is at any other time. At any other time. Uh, I believe the price is it is £15. If you they pay deposit today, it will fix your price at £15 for the weekend. It will rise to £20 after the weekend. Hold until December. 20 holds till December. 20 over December, it might rise after that. The cons are getting expensive, just like the films and the apps are. That's it. Thank you very much. I believe the next item here is Mary Gentle.
will be as soon as we're ready. Some point in the future. <laughs>